Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hi everyone, I am Mary Lou Mandel and this is a Spotlight On here at AfterBuzz TV. I'm Mary Lou Mandel, your host today. And before we get started, make sure you do log in and watch us on AfterBuzz TV, follow us on YouTube and iTunes, SoundCloud, all of those places so you can get the latest in all of your after shows and really awesome entertainment interviews. And today, I'm with actor, writer, and I know better as Jake Gyllenhaal enthusiast, <laughs> Brian Beacock. That's right. That's a lot of hyphens. How yes. are you, honey? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm so, great. Good. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, before we get started, let's uh, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Oh, great. Uh, so uh, Facebook, of course, Brian Beacock. Um, uh, Twitter, at Brian Beacock. Um, and I guess that's it, uh, other than my home address. <laughs> we don't need to give that out right Not now. Not if you don't have a pizza. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes really awesome garage sales there. <laughs> yes. So you may find us on oh, Craigslist. Oh, my life. Life is sad. <laughs> no, your life is wonderful. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all social media at Mary Lou Mandel. And if you are tuning in live right now, you can tweet questions for Brian at me at Mary Lou Mandel or hashtag Spotlight On, and we can embarrass Brian here <laughs> on the internet. Never. Never. You can't embarrass me. Never embarrass. <laughs> all right. Well, then let's get into it. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> why entertainment? You do. Everything, everything, everything. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I was, um, I was start. I started this when I was a kid. I was seven years old, playing piano and drums, and my dad was a trumpet player in San Francisco. My mom's a doll maker, and a few years ago, she had her doll on the White House Christmas tree. <gasps> like the very, awesome. very creative family. Um, so I always wanted to do this, and I um, started doing plays when I was a kid. Um, when I was in high school, I entered and, and made it to the finalists for an ABC talent competition like discover new talent kind of thing in high school i was terrified um and it eventually went to it was for a show called maserati and the brain so i'd make all these trips to san francisco to you know do the casting calls and the cold reads and stuff and it went to peter billingsley from a christmas story oh. he's the one who got the movie so i've always had this weird kind of like everyone loves a christmas story and for me it's like man oh, I, it could have been me you that know? jerk <laughs> yeah so um that was like the beginnings of uh, of my creative whatever life uh plays in high school extra work i was in howard the duck mm -hmm. the movie my first extra movie was howard the duck that's fun crazy uh dancing in the music video and uh you know high school college and eventually as i got older doing more work in san francisco i auditioned for the national tour of les miserables mm -hmm. and uh in san francisco booked the show three months after i auditioned for it by the way so i uh -huh. was like i'm giving up like, yes. this is terrible <laughs> terrible you're like what are you calling about i'm it sorry it's awful <laughs> Yeah, so I booked that, and it was a whole new world. You know, you get your union card. Um, I'm doing this huge major show, and I'm 23 years old and terrified, you know. Um, and after I finished that show, I thought, well, I've got my union card. i got a little experience behind me, a lot of experience, mm -hmm. frankly. And um, I thought, well, I'm going to move to L.A. Yes. Where no one cares about show uh, about theater. <laughs> Nobody like, cares. Lame is, who cares? Have you yeah. been on the Cosby show? Right. Right, but then a, you had a really fun adventure in L.A. too, though, so yeah. let's hear about that. I mean, L.A., so you get to L.A. and you're like, you know, okay, first thing is unemployment and then, like, <laughs> delivering newspapers on Wednesdays. Like, how do I make a living? <laughs> um, what has changed? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. But I was fortunate enough to get a job at uh, pretty early on at Universal Studios, mm -hmm. where I worked for 15 years in the uh, the Beetlejuice show. In the Beetlejuice Graveyard Review. Thank you very much. Rockin' Graveyard Rockin Review. Rockin' Graveyard Review. Yeah. And I have to say, for me, when I was in middle school, my friend and I, and I was in Florida, you were working <laughs> at Universal Hollywood, yeah. but I was in Florida at Universal Orlando, yep. and my friend and I, for spring break, went to the Beetlejuice Rockin' Graveyard Review every showing for like four days in a row and we're in love with Dracula. You were one of those girls. I was. In the front, front hi, row. He's looking at me. You were in the Wayne Brady show probably because oh. he came from Florida and yeah. he came to 
to LA to do our show. Yeah, so I did that. It was great. Five shows a day, mm-hmm. you know, four days a week. It was an awesome, awesome gig. Which um, character were you? I was Phantom of the Opera. Mm-hmm. So I sang Goodness, Greatness, Great Balls, great of, balls fire. of Fire like 500 times. <laughs> yeah. I sung that song. Um, <laughs> In fact, I have to take a, a girl out of the audience and dance with her. And I had mm-hmm. all kinds of situations. You grab a girl and then she points to the wheelchair that she should be in. Like, <laughs> I can't get up. Or, or you pick a girl up and then her wig falls. Like, I mean. <laughs> awful. Awful things. So I was always like a, a bone of contention with me. Right. And um, I was always the kid in the audience. Like, I hope that I can I pick picks me. this time to get danced Man. with. No, I was that kid too. So. That's our the beginning of our history, and then <laughs> right. this clay Brian and our and I are friends, and when yeah. we get a little bit into the different things that you do in LA to survive, we've aye, actually aye, met aye. through some other survival jobs, and it's really wonderful because you meet great people. Yes, but there's in the they, struggle. There are some scary survival jobs. Yes, sliming kids. Yes, and um, yeah, which is wonderful oh, yeah, and yeah, messy. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I was a music editor. Um, I. I did a lot of theater. Um, I was in a show called Naked Boys Singing, mm-hmm. which actually went around the world. Were and you naked? Me, I was naked. <gasps> like, y- yeah. wang out. It gets to the point where you're like, what the hell, I have to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was another one of the lows in the up and downs of, of Hollywood. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I did that show. I was the original Naked Maid. And surprisingly enough, being naked gives you a lot of exposure. Oh, um, <laughs> da, 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 da da I had a lot of uh, a lot of agents come to the show. A lot of casting directors. Um, <clears throat> a lot of you know husbands husbands on the night off Uh-oh. away from the wife. Um, <laughs> but it was a really good show for me. Um, so that was fun. Um, I was a music editor. Let's see what else did I do? Weird weird gigs. Oh, so I was doing all this theater and then. You know, when you're not working, you still got to make money. So I was selling cookies at a theater, you know, for oh, intermission. Uh huh. Cookies this, like your cookies? No, or no, just no. Like I was dressed. Yeah, <laughs> I was dressed. And um, you know, girl comes up to me and she goes, "Hey, aren't you that guy that was in that play last week? That was amazing. You were wonderful." And I said, "Oh, thank you very much." She's like, "Yeah, uh, two chocolate chip and an oatmeal raisin." Uh-huh. So I thought, well, I have to find another way of of making a living here. I, yeah. Now that I put it out there, so to speak, mm-hmm. I have to. I have to rein it in. I've had a similar situation like that when I was doing a, a show that I used to produce called Sassy Survival Guide in North Hollywood. Yeah. But I was also a waitress at a sushi bar in North Hollywood. <laughs> and people would come in. They're like, you're, you're Sassy Survival Guide. I'm like, uh-huh. Would you like more sake? <laughs> right. Here's your ginger. Brass tax. <laughs> yes. I need to pay my rent. Enjoy. <laughs> um, but yeah. And I did some TV stuff. I was in, um, God, back in the day, Fox was just starting the network. And I was in Fox's lowest rated TV movie in history. <laughs> what was it called? <laughs> it was called Based on an Untrue Story and it was kind of like That sounds par- awful. Yeah, it was a parody on all the uh, the things that were happening in the country. It's kind of mm-hmm. like where social media and TMZ kind of stuff was so we had a girl who fell into a well and we mm-hmm. had a you know, girl who lost her sense of smell and all this stuff. But it was Morgan Fairchild and Diane Cannon and Ricky Lake and it was a crazy crazy experience and I got that job because the casting director liked my coat that I wore at the audition. Yes. She told me, she goes, I liked your coat. So I'm like, well. Uh, that, it's, it's whatever works. Yeah, I wore the heck out of that coat. <laughs> this coat. For every audition. Yes. Um, That's great. So, yeah. so a lot of your stuff is, I feel like you do a lot of parody things. Yeah. Of your, your work. So like, what's White Trash wins the lotto? You, that's a parody of... It's a parody of Guns N' Roses, Guns of Axl Rose. Rose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was written by Andy Preboy. I did it not too long ago, five, six years ago. <clears throat> but I have no sense of time, so it could be 15 years. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, and we, we did that at the Roxy on Sunset Boulevard. It was written by Andy Preboy, great musician. And it's basically a Gilbert and Sullivan-style musical about Guns N' Roses and 80s rock. And I played Axl Rose. That's fantastic. It's really, it's a hysterical show. We did it a couple times there. Um, Greg Barrett, the comedy uh, stand-up guy, was in it. Um, Patton Oswalt. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall. He played my manager in it. So it was great. Like, I was the only person in the cast who I didn't recognize. Yes. Everyone else was really famous. And when you did the show, they were already recognizable? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, Patton Oswalt was kind of just starting out. Um, Greg Barrett was kind of starting out. Dave Foley, of course, mm-hmm. was famous, you know. Um, and we actually got to take that show to... On Conan. On Conan O'Brien, because we mm-hmm. went to New York for the Aspen Comedy Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And so we did, I guess, I, I don't know, it was a PS122 Comedy Film Festival. It was in New York, it wasn't in Aspen. Um, and Conan had seen the show, that's it, in Aspen, and wanted us to, to be on. So I got to sing this huge, huge number on the Conan O'Brien show, mm-hmm. and I was terrified. <laughs> terrified. Everything was intimidating, but it, it went really well. I was so excited. Um, 
Conan was great. He's, you know, he's 50 feet tall. Yes. If you didn't know that. Yeah, um, I've gone to see tapings of Conan in Burbank, and I, I love it. Like, he's one of my favorite hosts ever. I think he gives the best interviews. So yeah. I watch him and I study him, and he's giant. He's giant. Because and, there was somebody brilliant. who was like a PA that was standing next to me in the audience and then went and stood next to him, and they, he, they were like twice his size. Or he, Conan was twice their size. Yeah, it's like a circus show. It was nuts, but he's, yeah, so he's fantastic. He was great, and um, that show went on for a while. It was supposed to go to Broadway, and I guess there were just issues with um, producers and mm -hmm. stuff like that, as there, as there always is. Um, so I, I started doing more work. Um, I think that's when I got Naked Boy singing, and um, that was supposed to go to New York, and they asked me to go. And I had just auditioned for, um, gosh, I guess it was Digimon. Oh, which okay. Which is a cartoon. And um, I'd gotten that show and I thought, well, maybe I should stay in L.A. and start doing cartoons now mm -hmm. instead of going to New York for 450 a week to take my clothes off. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good you're, option. You're supposed to make that per night, right? Yeah. Um, so I stayed in L.A. and that's kind of what started that whole, mm -hmm. that whole voiceover thing. Right. You know? Um, and then another spoof thing that you did was the the rerun show. The rerun show for NBC. It was awesome. We uh, we came on after the last season of Seinfeld, so mm -hmm. whenever that was, which is good, good spot to a be. A good in. spot to be. It was produced by the makers of Mad TV. Um, on was that Fox? I think it was on mm -hmm. Fox. Um, so we took all the old TV shows like um, Partridge Family, Facts of Life, The Jeffersons, and we took the exact script, kind of condensed it down, but then put different kind of like slightly offensive spins on the intent. Mm -hmm. So it was great. Huge success. I played uh, Keith Partridge in, in The Partridge Family. I was... Um, um, oh, for Facts of Life, who for, was... Facts of Life, I was Mindy Cohn, who uh -huh. played Natalie. So I had all this makeup from, from Mad TV, you know, uh -huh. and I had, like, the Jewish star and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was really offensive. Um, <laughs> I was Uncle Arthur, Paul Lynn from uh, Bewitched and Endora. Mm -hmm. um, Keith Partridge, I said. Oh, and Zach from Saved by the Bell. Yes. So I actually got to do that scene where she goes, um, I'm so excited. Yes. Got to do that scene. And then what scene. was the spin on that one? Um... I think in that that was one, already comical as it is. Well, they're all ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, all the shows from the 70s were d ridiculous in the first place. I think everyone, yeah, that was it. Everyone in the show was taking pills. Oh, yeah. that's So great. everyone was on something, which is, you know, don't do drugs, kids. Oh, gosh. But right. it was great. And Danny Bonaducci came in for the Partridge family and played Danny. Yeah, that's on his, wonderful. On his knees with, you know, tennis shoes sticking ah. out. <laughs> And then so you also got into some movies as well. So I know you were in Mulholland Drive. Yeah, David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. Mm -hmm. Drive. I'm in the scene uh, where the four singers are standing around the girl that they want. Um, and that I actually thought was an extra job. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to do extra work. And I got there and they're, they're like, here's your trailer. Here's your costume. What? I'm like, what the heck? Because I had auditions singing, you know, this 19... 30s or 40s style mm -hmm. music and um yeah so it worked out really well um we were on the poster for the Cannes film festival and got to meet david lynch he's like a quiet calm dad mm -hmm. you know you expect him to be really, Makes creepy. really creepy stuff creepy stuff <laughs> um and then i also got a really really cool thing it's one of the, my favorite films I ever did was buying the cow you're buying the cow it's crazy it, it's on tv all the time yes at 3 a.m mm -hmm. ryan reynolds jerry o'connell Bill Bellamy, I think. And <laughs> the scene is Ryan Reynolds is out trying to take this girl home. And he goes home with her. And he's drunk. And he falls asleep. So she gets up in the morning and leaves. And I'm the girl's gay roommate. Yes. So I come in in the morning, bring him breakfast. And he thinks that he has gone home with me and slept with me. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the film, he thinks he's gay. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's contrived, but whatever. It's so funny. And I, I watched that clip. I found it. And oh, did you find it? Yeah. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. But... I'm wearing these from the wardrobe person. I'm wearing these tight Speedo, these leopard Speedo mm -hmm. that um, never got shown in the shot. So my first scene is with Ryan Reynolds. We're shooting the, the dream sequence where he wakes up in bed with me. Mm -hmm. So I get on set and I take off my robe and I'm naked except for these Speedos. And then I get into bed and they're completely covered. So he thinks this is just what I wear. Yes. As a person, it was really <laughs> uncomfortable. It was like, hey, I'm Ryan. I'm like, hey, I'm Brian. And then yes. Just... And where was Ryan Reynolds in his career at this point? He was, it was pre-Blade. So he Pre-Blade, like had a... after Van, uh, what was it? Van Helsing? No, not Van Helsing. Van Wilder. Van Wilder, yes. Yes. In fact, it may have been the same director. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But um, so he had a great body, but he wasn't Blade yet. Okay. Yeah. 
So he was an action star. He was just dreamy. I, still intimidating. Yes. <laughs> it's Ryan Reynolds. Hi. Yeah. Oh. It was great. It was great fun. That's but it, cool. But embarrassing. Great. So then, Oops. in addition to movies, right, so you had already mentioned some of your voiceover work. And yeah. you started with Digimon? Yeah. I was actually doing a play um, where I played 38 different people. Yeah. One man show. Um, fully committed at the Coronet, which no longer exists in L.A. And um, the director of Digimon saw the show. She's like, I think you can come in and, and do some voices. So they brought me in. I didn't know what I was doing. Got the job. Um, again, after months and months and months of waiting. And uh, that kind of started the voiceover career. So I did Digimon for a couple seasons playing uh, Takato mm -hmm. and uh, Bokomon and then Agumon. Agumon, mm -hmm. yeah. Those are all different things they're all different seasons Digimon. Oh. they're all different digimon <laughs> yes it's really funny because i don't really watch anime a whole yes. lot but it's kind of all i do yes so i sometimes have to google myself and study yeah you need to you need to get into it <laughs> i don't even know what some, i'm doing there's some fun ones but there's other um uh voiceovers that you do for video games yeah so there's there was one in particular that <laughs> you were in the sequel you were the voice of one of the main characters in the sequel and people were not happy with it that was tales of <laughs> symphonio dawn of a new of the new world is that the one yes okay. because i played both of those while we were friends but i did not know you were the voice i do remember thinking like, we oh, wouldn't they have changed been the friends voice. <laughs> you wouldn't have liked me anymore <laughs> uh, forget it so there was <laughs> once i was like looking you up and i found online one of those videos uh, it's from a movie where they take clips of this of hitler angry about something yeah it's in the boardroom and he's got all the people standing around and um they've used it they've and they they do subtitles over it and they make mm -hmm. it uh, applicable to whatever situation they're they're doing it's very funny um <laughs> and it's so funny because yeah. it's it's hitler is angry that you have replaced the original voice in tales of symphonia that's right uh, it's just blows my mind because I was like, oh my gosh, it's, you're legitimate because you're not anyone until the internet makes fun of you. Right. And Hitler, I mean, how much worse can it get? Um, but it, it's actually really funny. A lot of the fans, then they don't understand. I had nothing to do with it. I just went into an audition mm -hmm. and got the role and did the game. I never played the game. I never knew anything about the game. Yeah. And then there's all this, you know, we hate Brian Bika. Well, he ruined our game. Like, no. Well, it's a great game, but I don't know, like the voice didn't make too much of a difference to me. I just noticed it was different. But yeah. I will say with that game from the first to the second, a lot of the levels were the same and I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. It's happening to me now because I'm in this hugely successful game called um, Danganronpa. Mm -hmm. And I play this sadomasochistic um, yin and yang. Uh, evil panda bear. <laughs> evil panda bear that makes people kill themselves to get out of uh, school. Um, and I've done, I think, two or three games on it, and now I've been replaced with someone else. Mm -hmm. New company, whatever, you know, it, it, we have nothing to do with it. So I'm, you know, editing my Hitler video as we speak. Yes. <laughs> so you could do See that. See how he feels. Yes. Oh, no, he, that, that character has a little catchphrase. Can you give us that? We, it's got Whoops. a couple. But it's got a few? I, but he always goes, <laughs> So creepy. But if you do. Yeah, I love that. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I, that one I haven't played yet, but I do want to play that. But you've been in other games too, like uh, there's a Hitman game you were in. Yeah, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm, in the Soul, Soul Calibur Legends. Correct. Which was one of the first fighting games that I played. Is that right? Yeah. You'll have to tell me what it's about. Yeah, it's just a fighting game. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, lots of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> lots of half naked girls. Okay. <laughs> playing, fighting each other. So right. it's great. So and then uh, in addition to the video games, right, tons of anime. Yeah. You know, you've got uh, Razzle. Yeah, Razzle from Gourmeti, which is a show that was produced by the French, uh, dubbed into English, and only aired in Italy. Ha! Huh. Isn't that bizarre? Right. Yeah. Great. It was okay. a great gig. And then, of course, your, your Digimon, you've got Bleach, which I know is a really popular show. Yeah, I think one of them is our current right now. It's either Bleach or Naruto, I think, are still going on right now. Mm -hmm. And I did those for, for almost the whole duration of, of mm -hmm. the seasons. Those were great. Those were really great. So tell me a little bit about doing those different characters, and because not all of them are human. Right. Right. So, d what goes into it that's different if it's like a human character, a, a like a, a Digimon? Right. <laughs> well, a Digimon, obviously, you're going to have a lot more free reign to be a little bit slightly more cartoony or mm -hmm. play with things that you normally can't play with. Uh, typically, when you go into an audition, they have an artist rendering, so mm -hmm. you know he's fat, skinny, old, young. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Because um, you, you'll be able to see them, because especially you're dubbing something that's already existing. Correct, but that's usually only once you start the job. When you're doing an audition, it's oh. usually just either an animatic or maybe just a drawing of the character. Mm. So you're not dubbing at the time, so you kind of have to be creative. Right. Um, so yeah, um, I like I usually play you know young kids or you know like a toothbrush or you know 
a, a high pitched <laughs> panda bear. Uh, I like playing the evil people. That's really fun. Yeah. I love doing the evil voice. <laughs> Just like real life. Just like real life. Just kidding. You're not evil. <laughs> You're actually yeah, very, very nice. And then so currently airing on Disney XD yes. is Doraemon. Doraemon. Yes. So tell us about that character. Doraemon is a really cool show. It's basically Japan's Mickey Mouse. It's this blue cat. And mm -hmm. I know if you saw the photo, you'd know who he is. Uh, Google him. But he's been around for 50 years. And it's never been dubbed into English. It's been dubbed into every other language until last year it got dubbed into English. So I play Sneech the next door neighbor who's always trying to steal all of Doraemon's mm -hmm. uh, creations. <laughs> and he's, my character is wealthy and mean, and uh, he's just a blast to play. I get to sing sometimes, and like, he's really cool. Right. And so we're doing season two right now. Oh, that's that. fun. Yeah. Good, good. And that, so that's airing right now. So if you guys want to watch that, Disney XD is where you would find Doraemon. And now I know you and Steven were talking about the end of a certain show that went, like your character Oh, died in a weird yeah. way. So one of my first shows I ever did was Zatch Bell. And um, I played this character named Bianco. And, uh, you know, I, I was brand new to it. I was really excited. And I came in one day and I'm watching and I'm dubbing the what's on screen. My character flies into the air and a firework flies into his face and explodes. <laughs> oh. And then the, the engineer's like, and that's the end of Bianco. And that's how I died. Oh. But it's funny because when you die... In anime, when your character dies, so does your paycheck. Yes. You're like, oh, okay, so. You're like, give me another character? Yes. No? Yeah. Some incendiary, you know, mm -hmm. secondary character. Yeah, I could can be do, somebody else. I can do a different voice. Ooh, totally do something different. Yeah. So that was kind of like my first experience of mm -hmm. how characters would just die. Yes. Yeah. Well, a lot of these animes I haven't watched, but there was one that I did watch, oh. Sailor Moon. Right. And I'm so excited because you're now in the reboot the second dub second yeah. english round of dubbing for sailor moon r as ale as also ale. known as alan who has a weird relationship with his sister <laughs> and it's it's very exciting for me because i loved sailor moon yeah and you're crazy over it yeah it's great i wanted to be sailor mars i had a moon crescent wand i had the soundtrack i was fighting evil by moonlight living living life daylight I, Finding love by daylight. It's, it's great. It's so alien to me, all the, all the words that are coming out of your mouth. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what that is. I, 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 you know, I mean, I know from what I saw that he's got this weird kind of like incestuous relationship with Anne, right? Mm -hmm. And then I think at the end, some tree like sucks the life out of them. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm like, well, now what do I do for a paycheck? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another character. But it's a fun show. But, you know, dubbing it, it's old. Because mm -hmm. what is it, 80s? Yeah. So like the... And then who knows how old the original animation is from Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's an older looking show. Yeah. Well, I think that the first round was in the 90s. Okay. Oh, uh, the first English dub. So as far as the original Japanese anime, Probably it may be late 80s, e or early, early 90s. 90s. Yeah. yeah. But animation has changed so much. You yeah. can really see the difference. You yes. Know? But it's great. And I guess it's on TV right now. Yeah. Good. Thank you. It's great. I love it. Thanks I for I believe Hulu me. brought it back. Yeah. Yeah. We love Hulu. Yes. Oh, yeah. and you love TV. You love TV in general, I, which is great for you to be at AfterBuzz. You guys, it's he, I am a TV fanatic. I don't know how I get anything done. I don't know how my, my house doesn't look like, like a shook up snow globe, which is <laughs> stuff everywhere, because I have a list. Okay, let's hear. You I watch like one of, or two shows. One or two shows. This is, this is what I watch on TV. The Walking Dead, House Hunters, House Hunters International, The Americans, Bates Motel, Downton Abbey, I Zombie, Chopped, Married at First Sight, The Following, The Messengers, The Return, The Apprentice, Gotham Revenge, Dancing with the Stars, So You Think You Can Dance, Dance Moms, The Lizzie Borden Chronicles, Naked and Afraid, The Red Road, American Crime, American Odyssey, Dig, <laughs> Battle Creek, Shits Creek, Twelve Monkeys, How to Get Away with Murder, Stalker, Brooklyn Nine Nine, New Girl, Biggest Loser, American Idol, Amazing Race, Survivor, American Dad, Big Brother, Haven Hills, Kitchen Master Chef, Master Chef Junior, Storage Wars, Z Nation, Secrets and Lies, U.S. and Australian, The Flash, Daredevil, Unbreakable, Kimmy Schmidt, Outlander, Shark Take, Bob's Burgers, The Simpsons, Turn. RuPaul's Drag Race, and lastly, The Last Man on Earth. And I know that's the abridged version of the list. There's more, because you got like things about snakes and alligators, all those things so you So you can watch. find yourself at home here at AfterBuzz, because we watch all of Ooh. those shows also. Isn't that it's insane? Great. Yeah. I mean, literally, my, my TiVo is like s spherical. It can barely hold any mm -hmm. more information. So with watching all this TV, you still somehow have to make another career for yourself, and you have <laughs> to create your own work. Yeah. Right? So I mean, you've done that a few times. Yeah. You, when you're when you're on LA as long as I have been and you're you're nearing 100 years old. <laughs> you know, the WB is not calling you anymore. The mm -hmm. star and this or that. So you start creating your own work and uh, new media has really been helpful, web series and things mm -hmm. like that. So I've kind of I've delved into that. Yeah, which Certainly. is it's great cuz like when you're producing all of this new work, you get to 
use people you've worked with before. That's right. Yeah, which is awesome. Hire your friends, hire your talented people. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's really great. And so one of my favorites is I think we've got a, a caller. Oh, we do. A, yeah, I think we, we have a, a caller with a... Who's, who's specific? Hold on. Let's let's get her. Hello. Hello. He Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh! I, Hello? I think this may be one of my favorite is characters. Hello. Of oh, Hello. hi. This is Carol Ann McCracken calling. <laughs> Who am I speaking with? This is Mary Lou, and you're on oh, Spotlight. Oh, aren't you, oh. dear? Okay. Look, I'm calling <laughs> to talk to that uh, that Brian Beacock. Is he there with you? Hi, Carol Ann. How are you? Oh, darling, I'm marvelous. Hello. Uh, I'm just getting dinner. Uh, but the line here at Sparrow's is gigantic. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I love pizza. On Thursday. Um, you know, I wanted to say hello, and we really hope to get you back out here to New York soon to take care of the show. It's falling apart without you. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, there's never any red vines on set, and uh, they're making me memorize all my lines. Oh. Wow. I know. <laughs> okay, so you two have worked together, Brian and Carol Ann. Uh, what can you tell us about Brian? Well, you know, my mother always said, if you can't say anything nice, <gasps> what? what? but he's a deer. <laughs> uh, a bit of a tyrant, <laughs> but a deer. A tyrant. You know, he produces my show, McCracken Live, and it's fabulous. Oh. Uh, you can see it on the interweb at McCrackenLive.com, um, I think. Yeah. Oh, do you watch TV? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Oh, I love Revenge. Oh, Revenge. I love how they hired those twins to, to play Emily and Amanda. Oh, I don't I don't think that's what's what's happening Look, on that. I've got to go before my slice gets cold. That's not a phrase <laughs> I ever want to hear again. <laughs> so do I get a prize uh, for being the first caller or something? No, it's it's not that kind of show. There's no prizes, <laughs> but we're really glad you called. It's, oh, well, that's uh, a shame. You know, it hardly makes it worth it. Does it? <laughs> oh, no matter. You two enjoy your evening, and remember, watch Revenge. <laughs> I, and my show, of course. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Goodbye. Bye. Bye Car Carol Ann. She's That's insane. Great. And she, well, at least she's a TV fan also. She's a TV fan. Yeah, she, she, she could watch a Revenge after show here with After Buzz. When she's sober. Oh, when she's sober, yes. yes. So that was Carol Ann McCracken of yes. McCracken Live, which is one of my favorite projects that you've done. <laughs> Thank you. It's adorable. So tell us about how Carol Ann came to be. Uh, the, the character came to be from me auditioning for a bunch of uh, sketch comedy shows and, and stuff in Los Angeles. And I created this character called uh, Carol Ann McCracken. And she is a DIY goddess um, do-it-yourself host, kind of like Tootsie meets um, 30 Rock meets Home Improvement. Everything mm -hmm. goes wrong on her TV show. Um, the story behind the show is my character, Tyler, um, finds himself hosting a do-it-yourself television show in New York um, dressed as a woman. Mm -hmm. And the producers think the only way to make this show really work is to have that character surrounded by a series of onset disasters that he, she is never privy to. So things explode, things fall down, all that stuff, and he has to keep it, you know, straight uh, while they're live. <laughs> uh, it's a great show. We've got like eight to ten episodes. Um, the character Caroline McCracken is going to start going out on cruise ships. Um, I'm going to be on the red carpet next year for the mm -hmm. Oscars. Um, that incidentally was me calling in. Yes, yes, as Caroline. <laughs> if you didn't doubt, you couldn't tell. Um, so it's a really, really fun show. Um, now that you know Dame Edna, if anyone knows who Dame Edna is, um, has retired, I think mm -hmm. there's room. So, yeah, just swoop in. Yes, yeah, so I'm working on a live stage show for her, mm -hmm. for her, and also pitching the show right now yes. to TV. Like I love it. So there's one clip of her that's a Halloween show. <laughs> yes, and it's just everything is going wrong yeah. to make these. They're the cupcakes that you're making. Make these cupcakes. And your guy, who is is he the producer? He's the tech director. The, the tech John director. Yelvington plays the tech director, mm -hmm. uh, Jack Pierce. Yeah, so he gets his like fingers cut off. My favorite part, though, in that is, so they're making cupcakes for Halloween, <laughs> and then the doorbell rings, and oh, she's yes. like, oh, the kids are here. And I, I throw all the candy in their face, and there's the sounds of screams and stuff. It's so funny. She's really in a, a fabulously um, self-deprecating, self-deprecating yet also offensive to others mm -hmm. character. She's kind of like a Don Rickles, you yes. know? in drag and um, it has the best theme song isn't it wonderful mccracken live so wonderful written by jamie forsyth who writes for uh bones oh he's great my, he's my composer i use him for all my shows um yeah it's a show i'm really proud of and um there's kind of like a, a whole new 
level of of the show now that we're going to go live mm -hmm. with her you know so i'm going to start doing stand up with her and comedy clubs in los angeles and stuff mm -hmm. so we'll see how it goes yeah i can't wait to see that that's going to be definitely a cool thing to check out so you can learn more about mccracken live at mccracken live at mccracken live com and also on facebook mccracken live and twitter at mccracken live yeah you could tweet with carolan yeah you could talk to carolan she'll she'll and, talk to you yeah she'll tell you the truth yes for sure <laughs> we need to we need to try and get carolan on periscope like my new favorite app. It'd be great. Everything she has to do though is with one hand because the other one always has a martini. Of course. So, you know, it just takes longer to communicate. Obviously. And then <laughs> your most recent of your personal projects is near and dear to my heart. Of course. Acting Dead. Acting Dead. A, uh, a comedy, zombie comedy web series about actors whose lives are so terrible that they have to go to a company and kill themselves. Yes. <laughs> To be to turn themselves into zombies so they can then be cast in shows like mm -hmm. The Walking Dead and I Zombie and Warm Bodies. Of course, because those are so hot right now. So we've got uh, the yep. trailer for Acting Dead oh, great. that we can watch right now, so you guys can check that out. Cool. Are you an actor? You're not booking. I think I just haven't found the right material. You kind of have that desperate vibe, you know. Maybe acting is just not your thing. Uh... Uh, We're really looking for something a lot more authentic than that. I should die. Congratulations on choosing Flatline Inc. Getting actors work even if it kills them. <laughs> I don't think it worked. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Sorry, my bad. It's gonna be big. I just gotta figure out how to handle the smell, you know? Are you following me? I'm a freaking ghost. Very pushy. Thanks. Asking favors and very pushy. Stay away. <laughs> oh, God, my kidney. Oh, that's the spooky bullshit right there. This, this, and this. Whoa! What a icky mess. <laughs> Don't worry. It's only going to hurt a little, but forever. Has anyone done it before? Yes, Justin Bieber's a client. I mean, successfully? Uh, then no. <laughs> yes, that, that is crazy? Acting Dead. So if you guys want to know more about Acting Dead, you can go to actingdead.com. Also, Twitter, at Acting Dead. Correct. And uh, hello, all of the soap stars. Soap stars and other stars. <laughs> I, I, uh, we've got Debbie Gibson. You Debbie know, Gibson. Come on. Singer, yes. singer songwriter Debbie Gibson. Uh, Carolyn Hennessy, who just had a great arc on Revenge. Mm -hmm. um, and she's also from uh, True Blood, Cougar Town, General Hospital. Uh, Peter Allen Vogt, uh, who was on Hannah Montana and tons of other uh, TV shows and movies. Um, Coco Brown from uh, Tyler Perry's The Single Moms Club. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, well, I was part of it. I was an extra as a zombie a few different you times. Were, you were actually a pretty sexy zombie in the uh, in the zombie waitress. bar. Waitress. <laughs> uh, but you're also an associate producer on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and that was because being your friend, being Brian's yeah. friend, I wanted to just get involved in the project. So right. I came on and was helping out as needed and then you will, got really you, invested. I was going to say, you did more than just helping out. You, you did everything, you know, mm -hmm. like as an associate producer has a certain thing amount of things that they do but you went far beyond and you kind of like made the show run so it was great and that's the way you are with everything that we've done together mm -hmm. like if if you're there it's going to run smoothly oh well thank you for saying that and you know me being the writer and the producer and then also in it i needed to make sure that someone behind the scenes was keeping it you know keeping keeping the tent flaps down yes. you know because it was a crazy show it was crazy and when you mentioned debbie gibson though like so a lot of the the people i recognized but when debbie gibson came on like one of my first cassette tapes i ever had was <laughs> electric youth <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh and you guys are like hey can you go out and get like uh, this breakfast because like we were short something or whatever and then it was like it's for debbie gibson i was like yep. are you serious what is going on right now? It's so funny. She's an old friend uh, of a friend. They worked together uh, in Italy or whatever, and um, we'd become friends over the course of several years. She used to come to Beetlejuice mm. and sit backstage and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, it was so hard for me to not, like, say lines to her songs to her. Fangirl out. Where I was like, hi, Debbie, I'm lost in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. She was, how, how old was she when she became a superstar? She was a young girl, mm -hmm. right? So she told me that she really wanted to play this diner waitress because she'd never had a regular job. Yeah. You know? And she was so funny. She was so funny and, and so great. And she flew in from Vegas for whatever she was doing there to do the gig. And 
you know, we had over 100 people on the cast and crew for that show. Mm -hmm. um, so it was hard figuring out, well, Carolyn's going to be on General Hospital and, and John J. York is going to be on this and Eric Martzoff. Like, figuring out people's schedule was a nightmare, mm -hmm. which I, I passed off to another yes. producer, Susan Bernhardt. Yes, and she was fabulous. Susan's phenomenal, a phenomenal producer. And Paul Nigro, another mm -hmm. producer. Um, anyway, it's a great show, and um, we're winning a bunch of awards right now. Mm -hmm. which yeah, is recently cool. at the uh, Indie Series Awards. Yeah, we got um, best. Oh, Chris Gallia. We got best mm -hmm. uh, co star for Chris Gallia, who's mm -hmm. on Disney's Jesse. Um, Peter Vogt won for best uh, guest star or something, or co star, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and then what was best writing? Best writing, I was very proud of. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. it was so good. And then best comedy series, mm -hmm. which was really huge. Yes. And um, we're in San Francisco Web Fest coming up in a couple months, and we got a couple nominations for that as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's there's a lot going on with the show. We're we're taking it out and pitching it. And I just came from a, a Walking Dead zombie con mm -hmm. in uh, in Virginia, getting a bunch of new uh, East Coast fans, mm -hmm. zombie fans. That was great. And um, also got trapped in Virginia a little bit. Yeah, it was only uh, trapped. I don't know. It was <laughs> I was held back by eight tornadoes. I guess you even want to call that trapped. <laughs> Just eight tornadoes. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a great funny show. Um, it's kind of like The Office meets Shaun of the Dead. That's the style of how it's shot. You know, the pushes on the camera and the wipes and stuff. Very kind of like dry humor. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was its own challenge finding cameramen and stuff who could do that. That yes, skill, you that know, style. It's, it, that style. It's and is different. it still available on just the series? Or Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, JTS.tv, you could see the show, or you could just go to actingdead.com, mm -hmm. and it'll link you through. Uh, right now we're working on season two. I've got it kind of mapped out. Mm -hmm. Probably going to get to New York. Yes. There's going to be a little Broadway zombie action going on. I love on. it. We yeah. definitely need a musical episode. For sure. We'll have a musical episode, get Debbie back. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that's kind of my life right now. It's... Uh, Drag queens and dead people. Drag queens and dead people. Nothing wrong with that. No, you hear it every day. Yes. All right. So that is Brian Beacock, wonderful actor, writer, awesome guy all yeah. around. Tell them where they can find you on social media again. Uh, you can go to brianbeacock.com. You can uh, check me out on Facebook at Brian Beacock and Twitter at Brian Beacock. And remember, if you want to know more about McCracken Live, it's McCrackenLive.com or Acting Dead, ActingDead.com. I'm Mary Lou Mandel. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, Facebook, all over the internet as Mary Lou Mandel, and we will see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.